All right, the next step on our spatial statistics journey is the question, are these points in my data set randomly distributed? And there's two ways of addressing that. One is the average nearest neighbor and the other is Ripley's K. And the average nearest neighbor is taking the measured distance between each point and the next closest point and comparing that to the distance that would be expected if those points were randomly distributed based on pure chance. So it's looking for one of two potential patterns or one of two potential forces driving patterns. One is attraction, and that's where maybe something likes to be close to water or people like to be close to a port city or a food source or something. And the other is a dispersed condition where maybe farm buildings like to be spaced one every at the middle of every 40 acre parcel or trees are put on an eight by eight foot spacing. There's an artificial force spacing those things out. Where in the middle here is a random distribution where there is no process driving where those points are except for basic probability. So again, that's the distance between here and here. If it's artificially put on an eight by eight spacing, they're gonna be eight feet from one to the next. If it's clustered here, it could be very close to one another, except for some other points that don't necessarily have to be. But a random distribution is going to be sort of the middle ground. And that's going to make a lot more sense when you see it run. So here's Cumberland County, and I've calculated the area of the county. And let's search for the tool, average nearest neighbor. And that input feature class is the points here. And this is the area in square meters of the county, and I've included in that the area of the non-populated locations. So, okie dokie, and there it is, and there is our output. And we have a couple of values here. The observed mean distance between points, where this is how far, on average, each one of these points is from the next, 321 meters. The expected mean distance based on a random distribution throughout that area of that many square meters. If you randomly distributed this many points in that area, you would have or expect to have a distance of 392 meters between each point. That means that it is clustered, which is obvious based on looking at this. Portland is definitely got a lot more points and a lot more people, which makes sense. So again, remember these are census blocks that are artificially drawn to represent the population fairly. And that means there's going to be more blocks and more points where more people are. So that clustering is real, but it's a bit of a fuzzy data set to be working with. It's a good demonstration, but you might not approach it this way in real life. But anyway, this p-value of 0 0.000000 indicates that there is a very exceedingly low chance that this pattern has occurred purely by chance, as indeed it has not. We have some port cities here, and then we have some recreational areas around Sebago Lake, and people are definitely living where they are for a reason. Those reasons may vary, but there's a definite spatial pattern. So because this number is less than one, that is a cluster distribution, because this is less than 0.05, we consider that difference to be significant, meaning it is not occurring based on random chance alone. So if that number was greater than one, that would represent a dispersed condition. So that is how the average nearest neighbor works. Now let's switch over to Ripley's K. Multi-distance spatial cluster analysis. And what this is doing is looking at a variety of distances from each location and saying that if you look at things at the scale of this, there's a lot of little points in here, but if you look within the city of Portland, maybe, it's not actually all that clustered. But if you look at the scale of the entire county, oh, there's definite clusters and those clusters are Portland and Auburn and other big cities. So let's go ahead and just try this out. So we have Cumberland featured a point. And we'll just go into accept the defaults here. Let's give it some permutations. And those permutations are randomly generated 
data sets. So you're going to throw 99 random distri distributions of points out here. Now you have 99 different things to compare to. No weight field, no beginning distance. We'll just let it pick all of these things and accept those. So I'll just let it go with its defaults and think, 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 think. And that is going to take a while. So I'll be back. All right. And now that has finished running. And I bounced that back to just nine permutations rather than uh, 99 because that was taking forever. And this red line, we have the observed K, and that is the observed spatial clustering. And here we have the expected spatial clustering under the random conditions. And what that is indicating to us is that we have clustering at every scale at which we might look at this data set. So whether we are looking at it at this scale, which is the broad scale at this end of the axis, or if we're looking at it much more closely, come back here. Close, thank you. So whether we look at it like this, there's definite clustering here higher density here, lower density here, or if we zoom in here, even within the city of Portland, there's clusters where there's more points versus fewer. So whether you're looking at it that scale or that scale or that scale, there is clustering. If you looked at well, every scale at which you could consider this data set, there is clustering. If you had a data set that consisted of just these points, no other points, ignore the rest of Cumberland County. This would be a dispersed data set. You see how they're pretty evenly spaced. So there's something going on, probably city blocks, that are creating a artificial dispersion or a pattern that looks like it is deliberately spaced as opposed to something attracting points to a particular location, like a city center. So that is how Ripley's K works. It is asking at that scale, and that scale, and that scale, is there clustering or is there dispersion? And in this data set, at every scale that it considers, there is a lot more clustering than you would expect based on random chance.